Welcome to section four of our training on Zoom virtual jury trials, pretrial to verdict. In this section, we're going to talk about lawyer considerations, some of the things that are different from the lawyer's perspective that you're going to have to do different, and some of the different skill sets and litanies that you need to be aware of, as well as some of the concerns that you should just be thinking about as you go into one of these trials. Now, as Judge Cahan told us at the very beginning, we can anticipate that we're going to be living in this virtual world for, well, the foreseeable future. And you, of course, I, I hope have had the chance to view both Judge Phelps and Judge Keenan's excellent presentations, both on virtual jury selection and the tools and the skill sets that you would, you'll need to incorporate into your practice in this environment, as well as Judge Phelps' section on uh, pretrial, where she walks you through the preparation that's necessary. In our last set section, we talked about jury management, kind of how the judge is going to manage the jury and the instructions and what you should expect uh, to happen. But now this section is about you, and it's about your work and some of the things that you'll need to consider and some of the things that you're going to need to do a little bit differently. We're going to talk about just being patient. Uh, and we're going to talk about preparation. We're going to talk about some things that you're going to do differently with your witnesses, things that are different concerning the audio feeds during virtual trials versus in-person trial, as well as proximate, focus, and tone. We're also going to talk about visualizations and how those are a little bit different. And finally, we're going to talk about the differences between exhibit handling. Judge Phelps touched on this during the pretrial section, but now we're going to bring it into the courtroom and talk about how it plays out there. And, of course, we're going to talk about how does impeachment and refreshment work when, of course, you're working with an exhibit, which is normally a very physical skill. So we're going to walk through all of those things. The first thing we have to ask you to remember is that you're going to have challenges. Now, the reality is what we discovered is that virtual jury trials, in some respects, are actually easier and faster, certain aspects of them, than in-person jury trials. But there are challenges and there are glitches, and you have to be patient because the they're going to happen. Someone is going to lose their power or their internet connection, or there's going to be an audio or a technical issue. And the key here is to be patient and to approach it with civility and with good humor. And you're going to have those situations where if you're working remotely, if you're not working in your office, or that there's a witness, um, there's going to be a barking dog or a lawnmower. And again, let me point out first, usually it's not that bad and it can be dealt with. It does, to a degree, build empathy. So the first time that your, uh, your puppy wanders through and wants your attention, that's cute. Picking the puppy up and starting to stroke it, not so much. So that's probably something to be aware of. Same thing, by the way, with your witnesses. Now, your court, as we talked about in the last session, is going to be monitoring the jury, but we need your help because while we're going to be paying as close attention as we can, we, there's going, there, there, something could happen when our attention is momentarily distracted. So if you observe that a juror or a party has lost their connection, you can't see their picture anymore, or appears to be waving their hand trying to get someone's attention, probably signifying that there's an audio issue, feel free to just speak up and notify the court that the issue is there and needs to be dealt with. And th those things, will be, they will happen. And it's important that we just make a clear record of when it happened and that we're, you have the opportunity, and the judge will give you the opportunity if that happens, to basically kind of rewind and go back and ask uh, and make sure that we cover and that the jury hears and that that juror hears all of the information that needs to be provided. Let's talk about witnesses. First off, and I have to tell you, the most common complaint among the judges that do this work is, please prepare your witnesses. The first time that your witness dials into the courtroom should not be the first time they have ever used Zoom. Please make sure you know what technology they're going to use to connect. Is it an iPhone? Is it an iPad? Is it a computer? What kind of camera? And have that discussion. Please make sure that you have tested their connection first to make sure that they can effectively not only log in, but also that they can speak and be heard 
and be seen. Be aware of what's behind them. Now, your judge is going to talk about this with your, the jury to make sure that you can see the jury. You're going to do that during voir dire. But for your witnesses, please make sure that there's nothing distracting behind them in terms of things that might, um, might re relate to the case, but also that you know, there's a neutral background, but also please try, try not to make them appear as if they're in witness protection. Now, if there's a strong light source behind them, then that will be the effect of it. It's best that they either be overhead lit or lit from the sides or from the front. Consider the camera placement. Many laptops have the camera down at the bottom, which makes the witness look like they're peering down at the jury from a well. And again, if it's too high, it makes the jury, makes the witness um, look like they're staring up at the jury from the bottom of a well. Ideally, the camera should be about, about eye height, about the, about the same height as their eyes, so that they can look directly into the camera. And last, but certainly not least, yes, you have uploaded your exhibits, copies of your exhibits into ShareFile. Make sure your witnesses have their own copies of the, of the exhibits that they need. And you'll see why that's important in a moment. Because the witnesses, you know, the first time that the exhibit is displayed for purpose of laying foundation, it's not going to get displayed to the jury. Uh, so the witness has to have their own copy that they can access. And we'll talk about the four ways of skin in that cat in just a moment. Think about the audio considerations for you. First off, test your audio. Make sure it's working. And if you lose audio, and pay attention, if you lose audio uh, or if it looks like people can't hear you, that means your mic is problematic. Test that before court. Remember that in this process, it's kind of like a speakerphone, and there's about a quarter, a half second delay. So don't interrupt anyone. Make sure that they're done speaking. That, A, kind of levels the playing field, but it also becomes really important in the context of making sure that you have a clean record. You should expect very strict, very strict enforcement of the no speaking objection rule. And because if you start talking a lot about your, about your objection, of course, the jury's in the room. So you should expect your judge will put up their hand, interrupt you, and tell you, no, I only want to hear the word I object and the short form basis, the two to five word basis. And then the judge will ask you if they need more uh, information. And they will then ask if they go try to respond to an objection. Don't just leap in, wait for your judge, or just ask your judge, judge, may I respond? Bear in mind that your motions in limiting, they will be enforced. And in this environment, we're especially, we're especially concerned about making sure that the record is very clean. Try not to have any surprises for your judge or your opposing counsel and try to exercise as much civility as possible in terms of making sure that you discuss which witnesses are gonna be signing in and make sure you're bailiffing your judge which wit knows which witness is going to be coming in because ultimately they control who comes into the virtual courtroom. Now, just so you know, the courtrooms will generally, the judge is generally sitting, as I am now, sitting in the courtroom. The courtroom is open. People can come and go. And most of us will be displaying what's going on in the courtroom as one of the windows. And you are going to be being displayed into uh, the courtroom. So that's the open courts aspect. But in terms of your witnesses, observers, if you want someone to come into the courtroom, the bailiff and the judge has to let them in the so make sure that they know if you have a guest or who your witness is and what the name is that they can expect so that they let the right person in. Think about your visuals. And bear in mind that just in the courtroom, you, we move around the courtroom, we use our physicality and our bodies to tell the story in the courtroom. And the courtroom is theater. It's the stage. This is TV you have the same kind of proximate, it's just a smaller screen. And what that means is, yes, you need to be aware that hand gestures have a place. Hand gestures do not have a place like this, but they do have a place and you should be aware that injecting movement and injecting change into the juror's visual environment is helpful. Teach the jurors though to be aware of you. And what that means is you shouldn't be talking to the screen where they are. 
you need to be, and certainly you should either, you should when you're, you're not on screen and not talking, you should be monitoring the jury and having your staff monitor the jury. But when you're talking to the jury, remember, if you're going to make eye contact with them, you got to look at the camera, not at the screen. Dress appropriately. Uh, and yes, we've had people show up in bed. We've had people show up in their pajamas. We've had individuals show up without wearing any upper clothing and, you know, just dress appropriately. Remember, you're in court and you are conveying, okay, at least what the camera can see, you're conveying a very specific image. And be aware of what that image is. We discourage you from using virtual backgrounds for two reasons. One, they create kind of a glitchiness around you, but also the big reason is they eat up bandwidth and they eat up processor uh, power on your computer, which causes glitchiness in your connection. Many of your judges will just say absolutely no virtual backgrounds. What that means is you need to be aware of what's behind you and be thoughtful about what's behind you. Do you want um, something like what I have here? that generates a specific impression? Do you want to have a blank screen like what you see below? Um, do you want to have uh, art behind you or something that gives a, a particular impression? Do you, act, do you want to use a trial pad and actually have things that relate to the case behind you? If you're gonna do the latter, be remember, this is just like you're in court. And if you're gonna put something behind you, make sure it is not an exhibit that has not been admitted. Make sure that it is neutral and that it is permissible for it to be, uh, for it to be um, displayed to the jury. And also be aware when you're thinking about your witnesses, don't be afraid if you have a concern that a witness is either looking at something inappropriately or there's someone else in the room with that witness, don't be afraid to ask the judge, if you can have a 360, just have the witness take their camera or their computer, uh, or at least represent to you and to the court that there's no one else with them. And of course, you're going to be monitoring your witness. Remember, your witnesses need to be by themselves so that they can't be coached. But also, you're going to be monitoring the other side's witnesses as well. We need to talk a little bit about focus and tone. This is the small screen, and here's what we're learning. This environment is more intimate than being in court. There's not the space and the, the cushion that we have in the large physical courtroom. And here's what that means. If you're here in my courtroom, the courtroom that you see displayed down below there, if you're in that courtroom, and you start getting aggressive, and your tone starts getting aggra aggressive, the room sort of ab absorbs some of that. And the jury, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll generally get what it is that you're doing. But if you do that in this intimate space where your face is three feet away from the jurors, they don't like it. Why? Because you're in their face just like you're in the witness's face. So be aware that aggression doesn't play well. You can be direct. You can be precise. You can be directive. But aggression and the theater, it, remember you're on the small screen. It doesn't play quite as well. Okay, this is the part I know that you really have been waiting for. Let's talk about exhibits. Exhibits are just different. Why? Well, you're not moving physical things around the courtroom. And of course, we all learned the evidence dance in law school. Mark, show it to opposing counsel. Approach the witness. Hand it to the witness. Lay the foundation. After a foundation has been offered, offered it, and after it's been admitted, then you publish it to the jury. Okay, it works differently. Why? Because you have sort of one venue to show stuff to people that are in the meeting. That's the meeting, the share screen. And in the virtual trial, as Judge Phelps explained in the very first session, your exhibits have already been pre-marked. And you pre-marked them with neutral names, but they've been pre-marked when you uploaded them into ShareFile and you submitted your joint statement of evidence. Opposing counsel has access, so you don't have to be thinking about showing them, but you have to make it very clear to opposing counsel and to the court what it is that you're asking the witness to look at. And the witness can't look at it on the big screen because the jury can see that as well. We're talking about some solutions on that. Now, you still have to lay foundation and you still have to offer it. And when you publish it, you do that, of course, by 
sharing your screen. Two tips here. One, do not use share file, the document out of share file, to show it to the jury. You should have an exact copy of what is in share file on your computer. Use the one that's on your computer. It better be an exact copy. Use your computer to, to actually share the screen. And don't share your entire screen. Share the application. If it's Adobe, should pull up Adobe in share screen, not your entire screen, because then we can see all your emails and we can see all your icons. So share it from your computer, not from share file, because it'll sit there on Word, and share it um, and share the application that you've opened then, not your entire screen. So let's now talk about the dance in this environment. Here's how it works. Instead of the whole mark, show, hand, you know, here you direct your witness to the, the attention to the exhibit number. Now, it should already have been uploaded in share file so that opposing counsel and the judge, we can look at it. We know what you're talking about. And it has a name, which is the exhibit number. And it should be a neutral name. And bear in mind that if you upload them with highly, uh, highly suggestive names, you and your judge are going to have a conversation about that. So try to stay away from you know, really argumentative names, but simply descriptive names. The witness should have their own copy wherever they are. Now, that can be an actual physical copy that you've mailed to them. It can be um, a PDF or it can be a Word or an electronic version that you've emailed to them. If you're in the middle of trial and push comes to shove, you're trying to figure out how to get them, you can email it to them, or you can, Zoom itself actually has in the chat function, it has a uh, share file section in which you can see they're displayed on my screen. It's down on the bottom, it's hidden behind a little button that says uh, file. You click on that, and you can share from your computer. You may have to ask your judge to open up share because many of our judges keep the chat function closed. The worst thing that you can do, but if push comes to shove, it's an option, is you can ask the judge for a virtual sidebar. And as we talked about during in the last session on jury management, it's really very easy, it's very quick for the judge to remove the jury from the room. It's just not optimal. It delays things. And every time they do that, they, we have to do, we do that, we have to do another sound check, another wave to make sure that they can hear and see everything. So there, it, it does tend to interrupt the flow. The best thing to do is just make sure your witness has their copy of it. And so you simply direct their witness's attention to it, attention to it. You ask them questions about it. The juror is watching the witness just like they would in court. They're not seeing the exhibit. You lay foundation, you offer it. If it's admitted, at that point you ask to publish, and then you pop up your screen share. Now you're thinking about, well, whoa, 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 time out. What about impeachment? I have depositions. I have exhibits. I want to impeach my witness, this witness, um, with something that said before. Well, again, the process is the same. You just got to bear in mind that it's a slightly different environment. First, of course, you're going to confirm, you know, you confirm the testimony that you're uh, impeaching. You will credit the prior statement. And again, you're not displaying the deposition at this point. You're not displaying the exhibit at this point, but you're asking the witness questions about it. And then there may come the point where you have to confront them. The best practice, which you see in the chart that's here on your screen, is that your confrontation really consists of two. And by the way, this is true in in-person court as well as, as well as virtual court, consists of two kind of elements. One is the, the verbal confrontation, where you read it to them. And you ask them to confirm that that's that you had read it correctly. And of course, they have their own copy because you present it to them, you've emailed it to them, um, you've used Zoom file to get them their, their their copy of the deposition. And so you read it to them, and you just ask if they've read it correctly. And only if they deny that you have read it correctly, and of course you have, only then do you get to show them the deposition or the exhibit. And so this is just the way it works, the same way it works in live court, except, of course, you're having to work with a witness remotely. If they actually, in fact, do deny it, then you can move to publish it to the jury. You can publish the exhibit or the deposition of the jury by using your screen share. 
Let's talk a little bit about the difference between depositions and exhibits. Now, as Judge Phelps told you at the, at the, during, at the very first session, you will have sent the sealed original to the court. You do not unseal it and upload it, as she told you. Rather, you send the sealed original to the court. So the judge has it sitting right next to them during the trial. When the time comes for you to, um, to impeach using or to use that deposition, you, just like in, in, in court, you say on the record, Your Honor, we move to publish the deposition of John Smith. Now, of course, in this context, publish doesn't mean the same thing as publish an exhibit. It just means that the, the judge is going to reach down, pull out the sealed exhibit, they're going to open it up, and they're going to put a stamp on it that shows that the sealed original has been opened in court. The judge now has their official copy. What you have done is you followed the instructions in the pretrial order. You have also uploaded a PDF of the copy of the exhibit using the share file instructions on the naming protocols. You've uploaded that into the into share file. And so you have one in share file, which is part of uh, which is which everyone which everyone including opposing counsel and the judge at BB can see. But you also but the judge has the original. You only screen share the deposition if the witness denies that you have read it incorrectly. And at that point, you can ask the judge to publish or to screen share the PDF version, that page in line. Only then do you actually get to put it up and show it to the jury. Well, how does this work with exhibits, either refreshment exhibits uh, or impeachment exhibits? Well, remember, it's essentially the same thing, and you have the same four options to get it in the hands of the witness. But the key to remember is, is that the jury is not shown the exhibit, just like in an in, in-person in court. And there's an added step that you've got to remember, and it's hard to do this because you're not in the same place as the, as the witness. So you can't just walk up and take it away from them. You have to direct the witness to take whatever the exhibit or whatever the document is that's being used to refresh and to remove it from their site and to have them confirm that they've done that. And you got to do that on the record. Now, at this point, you're also probably thinking, wait a minute, exhibits come up in the middle of trial. I would direct in, what do I do about that? And what about those things that I create? Very early in pandemic, Judge Dave Keenan and Judge Steve Rosen did an incredible um, CLE. It's about an hour long on how to handle exhibits. But here's what you really need to know. If you create an exhibit during trial, you can upload it real time during the trial. It just has to be in an electronic format. You can take a picture of it. You can take a, uh, a screenshot of it. And then it can be marked as a new exhibit and it can be uploaded into ShareFile right during the middle of trial. And so that's really what you need to remember about that. Well, that's lawyer considerations in a nutshell. Please make sure that you watch Judge Phelps uh, on pretrial, Judge Keenan and the tools that he gave you for jury selection. And if you have questions about how the jury is going, how you're going to interact with the jury and how you, the the judge will be interacting with the jury and what the jurors will be doing. Uh, please watch part three. Thanks again for watching and thank you for your good work in these difficult times.